rather be than to worship this morning, amen? amen. Okay. <laughs> I uh, got a couple things to mention. Um, if you look on your calendar on the back of your, on your bulletins, you will see that the UMW is having another breakfast this Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Isn't that cool? But they're not. That's a misprint. Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> and um, the men, they are having another breakfast, I understand. I still haven't figured out why theirs is at 7 o'clock in the morning, and the women are wise enough to do it at 9. But with that, um, for all the men that helped as we hosted this last uh, yesterday, um, thank you so much. It was a wonderful time. There are like 30-some folks here. It was an outstanding uh, uh, thing to do. Um, that's kind of it for announcements, but I do want to mention one thing. Um, so I had something happen that has never happened to me before. 16 years of ministry. Thank you, that's all I had. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what it was. 16 years of ministry for the first time ever. What? Yeah, give me that. Yeah, for the first time ever, Al came ready, okay? I said, I am so, I, I'm just so uptight about always finishing so darn late. I am going to finish on time for once just to show him I can. And we were done last week at 10.02. That's applaudable. <laughs> not once, not twice. I took count. This really happens. You need to understand, 16 times I had people come to me and say, Pastor, we just felt like we got shorted. So I warned Al. I said, bring a snack. <laughs> so, I called my buddy Keith, and I'm like, Keith, I, I, I'm getting complaints. I don't know what to do. And Keith goes, wait, they're complaining because your sermon ran too short? And I said, yeah. And he says, I think that might be a compliment. <laughs> I said, I'm not sure that's how they meant it. I don't Anyway, it's been wonderful. And actually, I'm cheesing because AV is down, and they told me I have to cheese until they're ready to go. We're ready to go. So with that, y'all, let's set our hearts and our minds right, and let us prepare to, to just have a significant experience with the divine this morning.
Join with me in our greeting prayer this morning. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Glory in his holy name. Look to the Lord and his strength. Amen and amen.
remain standing and join me in the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, so often we close our eyes to pray. We want to shut out distractions. Yet so often we close our eyes not to see you in the faces of those in need of hope. Open our eyes, Lord. Lead us to see you in the brokenness of this world, in those in despair. Lend us your sight, Lord, to see them as wonderfully and fearfully made. And lend us your grace and love them as well. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. As we have received grace and love in Jesus Christ, let us share Christ's peace with one another. Amen. Please be seated. Scripture reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 4 through 6, and verse 10. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And the ransoms of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away time for the children. This little light was the song that was playing when kids were walking up. This little light of whose? This little light of whose? Mine. You got that right. Well, I got a sack of surprises and a book of surprises, and we're going to play some surprise games. You guys ready? Okay. First surprise 
comes from this book here. Does anybody know what book this is? Bible. The Bible, the book of books. Matthew 5, 16. Jesus was talking from his Sermon on the Mount. Here's what he said. In the same way, your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. So that's where that song came from. Isn't that a surprise? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, came from the Bible. Does that surprise you? Yes. I knew it would. Let's see what surprises I have in this sack. Would you take whatever's in that sack out and see what surprise we have in that sack? Oh. Caleb, what's that? Glow sticks. Remember about a month ago, the pastor had us all come up and get glow sticks. We wrapped them around our wrist, and we were supposed to take that light out so people would ask us what that light's about. Well, I don't remember doing that. A month ago, that was a lifetime ago, wasn't it, for you? <laughs> I got another little surprise here. Some of my tin snips. Oh, in the last sack of surprises, I have to put away till the end. Nope. <laughs> well, I gotta go back to my book of surprises. We're now gonna play the pretend game, Aurora. Are you ready to pretend? Let's pretend. Faith, if you would hold that while I'm reading, I want everybody to pretend that you are that stick, that light stick. Can you pretend that? Here's what we're going to pretend from 1 Thessalonians, which Donald Trump would call 1 Thessalonians. 1 <laughs> Thessalonians 5.23. May the God who gives us peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being. Now remember, we're playing pretend. That stick is you. All of you is that stick. Your whole being is that stick. Are you ready? Pay cl close attention. Your whole being, spirit, soul, and body, free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So hold that stick up real high so everybody can see it. That's faith right there. We're pretending. Hold it up high. Every single one of you. Hold it up high. Every single one of you. Hold it up high. Hold it up high. We're pretending that's you. We're pretending that. Well, go ahead and shake it all you want. Hold it up high, hold it up high. Okay, everybody's held it up high. Hold it up high. We're gonna pretend that's you. So let's see from my sack of surprises if we can better understand the book of surprises because that seems a little confusing to me. Could you hold the uh, mic, please? Just don't say anything. <laughs> so, can't hold it by my mouth. Hold it by my mouth, not yours. <laughs> You're not supposed to talk. Okay, so this is each of us. And does anybody want to guess what this plastic outer part would be if we're pretending that's us? That would be the head, the whole plastic part. That's the body. But God said, God said we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. So, does everybody see that that plastic part's our body? You got it? Pretend? Well, that means that the soul and the spirit must be inside the body. Well, how are we going to know what's inside the body 
if we don't, if we don't get off the tail. So watch what's inside the body, the soul and the spirit, right? You guys want to see your soul and spirit? You want to pretend to see it? Get ready. Here comes the soul. Oh, oh the spirit popped out a little bit. Here comes the soul. You guys see the soul? Did you see the soul dripping out? That's like your thoughts and your feelings. That's your personality. That's what's inside of you that makes you you. And here's some good news. Your body's going to die someday. This old stick is going to, the outside's going to be, you're going to be dead. But the inside, the soul lives forever. Oh yeah, he wants to see. You see that, see all that stuff? You see all that stuff in there? That's like our soul. That's our thoughts and our feelings. Now our spirit. That's like your spirit. But the problem with our spirit is when God breathed life into us, he breathed the human spirit into us. He didn't breathe his spirit into us. So this stick is not glowing because if it's just the body, the soul, and the spirit on its own, there's no light. And what did the song say? This little light of mine, right? I'm going to let it shine, right? There's one thing stopping us from shining. Does anybody want to guess what it is? Sin. Sin keeps us in the darkness, and we're not shining. Once we come out of the darkness, we have the chance to shine. But this stick came out of the darkness, and it's still not shining. So, yes, we must repent of our sins to come out of the darkness. But that doesn't mean we're going to shine. In order to shine, we've got to let the spirit of God into our human spirit. Can I show you how to do that? You have to break your will and give it to God. So I'm going to break that glass. Did you hear it? This little, this little light of mine. I've got to let it shine, right? What's that? No, I wanted you to see what happens to a glow stick when you don't let God's spirit break into your spirit. It's, it's out of the darkness, but it's not providing light for those that are still in the darkness. So in conclusion, I have one more little book of surprise. One more little surprise. How you guys are never going to forget this. Are you ready? You're never, ever going to forget this the rest of your life. Because as Jesus continued on his Sermon on the Mount, here's what he said. And I want you guys to speak it into the microphone. Get ready. Matthew 6, 9, Jesus said this. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father... How will be thy name? Our kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. As soon as you really mean that prayer, you've let the Holy Spirit put God's spirit in with your spirit, and then his will be done, and that's how you shine. We've already said our prayer, so let's be seated. <laughs> Oops.
I like it when Tom does the children's messages. And, and I know that he's like all sciencey. And he says, what is it that keeps us from glowing? And I said, it's photosynthesis. Because <laughs> the only sciencey word I could think of. <laughs> could you hold your Bible up again for me for just a second? Almost way up here. May I borrow it for just a moment? I promise I will handle it gently. Yeah. Y'all see this? Does this make any impression on you at all? As he came up here and he was whipping through it and it's taped together and I can see over his shoulder and it's highlighted and it's written in the margin. This Bible has had a, a lot of mileage put on it. Wow. So it's like 10 years old. That is fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with me. I like to see a dog-eared Bible, don't you? We are continuing in our study of Mark. Uh, as Mark keeps telling us, Jesus is on his way. As we look to our map, he started at, at Mount Hermon. He went to Bethsaida. He's been working his way down the Jordan. And now he is coming into Jericho. So let's pay attention as Jesus is on his way. Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer, cheer up on your feet. He's calling to you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you so, so much for this opportunity to be here in this place. Lord, we thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for warm company. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we know that we have just busy schedules. Lord, we are just such a busy and, 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 and complex people. Lord, just for a time, we ask you please... Let us come to you with the awe of little children. Lord, let us be a quiet people, listening for your still and quiet voice. And Lord, as I lead in this time, I, I ask you, please, allow me to diminish so that you're revealed all the more. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen. So Jesus is on his way and he came into Jericho. Jericho is about 15 miles north of Jerusalem. He has almost reached his goal. <clears throat> Bartimaeus is a blind beggar. Now, set the stage. He's a blind beggar, probably sitting on the roadside asking for alms, and here comes Jesus. He's heard Jesus' name. He's heard what Jesus can do, and he has found hope. And so as Jesus is approaching, he can hear the crowd. He can hear the, the happy talking and the, and, and the people praising, and, 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 and he says... Rabbi, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm sure he's working very hard to be heard over the rest of the crowd because the rest of the crowd, they're all cheering for Jesus too. Jesus, Rabbi, have mercy on me. And then they turned to him and they said, quiet down. Quiet down, beggar. This is the most important man of, of our time. This is a very important person that's coming down the road. This is the person who's going to deliver us. This is the person who's going to save us. And he says, yes, I understand that. Jesus, have mercy on me. Quiet down. He doesn't have time for you. But Jesus heard him. Jesus heard him. And he says, who's that yelling? Ah, oh, it's just Bartimaeus the blind man. No big deal. No, send him to me. Now, the, the Bible doesn't tell us the rest of the story, but how many of y'all want to know? I want to know what happened next. 
okay? It says he threw off his, his, his uh, uh, blanket and he jumped to his feet and he went straight to Jesus. He's blind. How did he get there? Have you thought about that? How did he get to Jesus? Do you think Jesus was standing off to the corner going, Marco? <laughs> Marco! Anyway, no. How did he get to Jesus? Well, I see it one of two ways. One of the crowd who was just telling him to quiet down went up and got him and walked him to Jesus. Here you go. Or one of the disciples came and grabbed him and said, Jesus wants to see you. Come with me. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Someone brought him to Jesus. Someone had to bring him to Jesus. Jesus says, what do you want? What are you yelling about? Rabbi, Rabbi, I, I, I want to see. What does that say to you? It says, Rabbi, Jesus, I've heard of you. Jesus, I have lived without hope. The world has been darkness to me. I am trapped in a world of darkness. Jesus, I want to see. Jesus, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. You're, you're a man of God. You are God's anointed. You are the Messiah with which we have been told. I know you can do this. Jesus, I want to see. He says, I know you can do this. And Jesus says, your faith has healed you. Think about that. Suddenly, he could see. What if your first visual memory, that memory that, that you know that memory, you know there are certain things, I, when, I, when I do weddings, I tell my couples all the time, you know, there are certain things that you don't want to do. You don't want to like, go party in the night before and come whirling in here all you know, with your hair messed up and you know, all, that's not what you want to do. Because there are certain days in your life that you want to remember. And you want to remember them in color. You want to remember every nuance, every, every facet, every piece. You want to remember the smell in the air. You want to remember what you saw and the colors it was in and who was there and how you felt. You with me? It's your wedding day. It's the day you want to remember in color. The blind man opens his eyes. And he saw Jesus' face. That's his first memory. His first visual memory is the face of Christ in color. Man, it just gives me chills. How about you? It gives me chills. I want to see Jesus' face too. Don't you? I want to see Jesus' face. I want to know what that looks like. What did Jesus look like? Was he tall? Was he, was he, was he broad? Was he a, a healthy man? <laughs> what was Jesus like? You know, we have this picture you know, all over the church in here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You got blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. He's looking up in the air. He's looking, you know, you know what I'm talking about? That's what we call Western European Jesus, okay? Western European Jesus. Why? Well, because Jesus came from Nazareth. What does that mean? That means that Jesus most probably was not blonde-haired and blue-eyed, okay? Jesus was probably, well, then he must be like every culture, Every culture, watch the screens, every culture has Jesus' face matching their culture. Have you ever noticed that? The actual physical Jesus being from Nazareth would have been dark-skinned. He probably would have had curly hair. Okay? He probably was standing somewhere around the average of that time was five foot five to five foot six. He would not have been on the basketball team. But is that what Jesus looks like? Is that what Jesus looks like? Are we defined only by the living, the, 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 the humanity that was Jesus? Because I'm going to give you another thought. Jesus, Jesus, I want to see, Bartimaeus says. Jesus, I want to see. I want to see, Jesus. It's what I want. I want to see. Wait, I want to see. I want to see Jesus. I want to see your face. And Jesus says, your faith has healed you. And he turns and says immediately, what does he do? He praises God and does what? Follows Jesus. He came face to face with the divine and knows transformation. He was transformed. And then he became a disciple, a follower of Jesus. You know what that means? It means when I see Barnabas from this point forward... I see Jesus. Does that make sense? 
He does, he's a disciple of Christ. I see Jesus. Bill, when I look at you, I see, I see Jesus. Y'all know Bill Scanlon, don't you? Has the man ever had a bad thing to say about anybody? He, he's constantly working to get new small groups going. He's a constant help to me. I see Jesus when I see you. Kathy goes into to the, uh, uh, with the kids. You know, what do we call that? Oh, yeah, confirmation. It's a church thing. Okay. <laughs> she goes down into confirmation and rides hurt on those kids until I get there or until I get brave enough to get there. I see Jesus in you. Your Jesus is a little nutty, but I like that Jesus. Okay? I see Jesus in our knitters. I see Jesus in our sewers. I see Jesus in the children's uh, education. I see Jesus in those who read from the pulpit. Y'all, I see Jesus in you all over the place. You go to committees. You help organize. Uh, Gary and Ron, are they here today? Have y'all ever been to a trustee meeting? I never cared for my children the way they care for this building, which probably explains a lot. They love this place. I see Jesus in them. Bartimaeus saw Jesus' face, his first memory, and he's transformed. And then he followed Jesus. He allowed Jesus to lead is another way of putting that, isn't it? When I see Barnabas, I see Jesus. Do you see Jesus in me? Has enough of me gotten out of the way? Can you see Jesus in me? I look at my inside. Y'all look out and you're saying, well, he's got the robe on. Yeah, but you know what's inside this robe? Brokenness. Sometimes I'm angry. Sometimes I'm frustrated. Sometimes I'm hungry, which always makes me grouchy, which is a lot of the time, I think. Do you get to see Jesus in me? Have I gotten enough out of the way? I want to be like Jesus. Can you tell from my witness that I came face to face with Jesus? That I have a visual memory of Jesus' face and I have been transformed. And because I've been transformed, I am a follower of Christ. Can you see that in me? I hope so. I hope so. I'm going to keep working on it. Because I want to be like Jesus. And I want you to see Jesus in me. And I want people who come and, and, and they meet Jesus. I want them to know that they've had a, a, a significant experience with the divine. And I want them to be transformed. And I want them to be a follower of Jesus too. Because it's awesome. It's awesome to be free. It's awesome to know that the stuff of this world that, that used to hold me back, the stuff of this world that used to hold me down, worrying about what others maybe thought I would like what I was wearing or, or what I was doing, or, or you know, I, I don't have to worry about that. See, I'm free. I'm, I'm Jesus' uh, vision now. I, I'm a part of Jesus' ministry. I don't worry about that stuff. I'm just going to love you in my goofy way. I'm just going to love you. And I hope you see Jesus in that. And that's all. I'm free of everything else. I can wear camouflage if I want to. As long as you see Jesus in that. Jesus had a sense of humor. If you're not sure, check out the platypus. Yeah, that was funny. It really was. There's a scripture I want to read for you from Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God for the Father through him. In your witness, how do you give thanks to God? In your witness of Jesus Christ. In all that you do, in everything you say and everything you do, in every action and reaction, in every plan, in your voice, with your hands, with your heart, we glorify Jesus, giving witness of Jesus Christ through us. That is our thanksgiving. How are you living as a thanksgiving in your witness to God? Have you met Jesus? Have you seen his face? Were you transformed? Then how is Jesus your part of your witness? That's as complicated as it is, folks. It's simple instruction. If it wasn't, Tom would be up here. He's got the big words. 
tiny itty bitty little ones that word knows how to spell check people have you had a significant experience with the divine have you seen Jesus face are you transformed how do you live that in thanksgiving in your witness does your witness reveal that you have come face to face with Jesus and have been transformed and your personal witness is that of a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. I pray today we are going to do <clears throat> the kingdom feast here in a bit. We're going to come forward for communion. And I pray today as you come forward to communion, knowing that you are going to see, be in the presence, the very presence of Christ at the kingdom table. As you come forward, I want you to consider your journey. I want you to consider your journey as you make your way here. I want you to remember that time you saw Jesus in the face, when you had that, 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 that personal experience, that one which caused you to transform, that one which causes Jesus to be a part of your witness in thanksgiving. I want you to think about that journey as you come up here, and then I want you to accept from Christ's self the body and the blood. I want you to come here and meet Jesus here. You can stay and pray at the rail if you wish. Open yourself. But you know, Pastor, I've never had that lightning bolt experience, that Damascus, Damascus experience. You know what I'm talking about? Paul's rolling down the road on his way to Damascus because he's going to go beat up on a bunch of Christians, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, he's struck blind. And Jesus says, paraphrased by Phil, why are you picking on me, right? Three days later, his eyes cleared like scales falling off his eyes. And he says, I love Jesus. I've had a significant experience with the divine. I'm going to be a witness of the celebration of Jesus in my life. Does that make sense? Pastor, I never went blind. Pastor, I haven't had that moment. Really? Then why are you here? People, all of us in some way, some people have lightning bolts experience. Some people, it kind of grows slowly. It doesn't matter the, the, the function by which God's love grabs hold of you. For some reason, God's love is here. Because you're here. There's a lot of other things you could be doing this morning. But you chose to be here. I want you to think about that journey as you venture forward. I want you to experience Christ serving you here at the table. And then, if you wish, you may stop and pray and say, Lord... Help me to make more room for you in my heart, in my life, and, and in my witness. Lord, help me to make more room for you. Lord, thank you for all the ways that you have glorified in my life. Thank you for the freedom that you've given me to live a life without shame, a life of bold proclamation. Lord, thank you for the way that you have loved me. Stop and pray, or you can pray in your pew. Some of us kneeling a little while means that we have to get a forklift in to get us back up again. Anybody besides me? I'm looking around. There's probably enough fellows in here to get me up, but it, it'll be work. You all stop and pray. Lord, help me to make more room for you. In my witness, let me live giving thanks to you for meeting me and transforming me. Lord, help me to be a disciple. Pray that I, we shall diminish so that Jesus will know us, or pray that we will diminish so that Jesus is known more in our witness. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, have mercy on me. I want to see Jesus. Amen? Let us join together in our response hymn number 451.
may be seated. Another part of our response is we hear God's word and we, we learn or we, we seek to internalize it. Our response to that is we prepare for the kingdom table is that we focus on God's generosity to us and the things that we return to God. Our special uh, collection this month is for the Gideons. And I would like to have Charlie Holland said, please come forward. And he is going to give us a presentation on our special offering this month. Saturday morning, uh, a brave soldier came through. Uh, probably one of the bravest men that I've ever met. In his hand, he had a little brown book. He said, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? He opened it to the back pages and shared with me his plan of salvation. He told me that the Lord loved me and he could forgive me of all my sins. I took that New Testament back to my cell, and for the very first time, I opened up that New Testament, and I read through the entire Gospel of Mark. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and he gave me that little book told me to take it with me, told me to put my name on the back of it if I believed it, and uh, he turned and walked away. Gideons are men of your church, doing what they've been called to do. These are your testimonies. The Gideon Ministry expands your opportunities for evangelism in your community and beyond. When you participate in the Gideon Ministry through prayer, financial gifts, and membership, you dramatically expand the reach of your church. In fact, over the 100 plus years of the Gideon ministry, you've enabled us to give away almost 2 billion copies of scripture. Please join hands with us as together we become God's love in action, placing his word across the street and around the world. I don't know where all the millions of scripture has gone, but I know where one scripture has gone, and it landed in my hand. Because of you and the purpose and the plans of the Gideons, my whole life has changed. And it was that scripture that began the journey for me toward a life of obedience to Christ. Because it is the word of God that transforms lives. Thank you for letting me worship with you this morning. Your support makes our ministry possible. Each of you got a bulletin insert that gives you a great overview of what we do. I have uh, another sheet that has our websites on it. Uh, one thing I wanna highlight is, if you have a smartphone, we will give you a free application that has 1,158 translations of the Bible in it. You can carry it anywhere. And you can share it freely. Um, the first thing we ask for from you is prayer. Um, I would ask you to pray specifically. Last fall, we were able to give away 600 New Testaments to the incoming freshmen at UD. Pray that the word of God takes root and pray that we have the opportunity to do it again. Um, I will be in the narthex at the conclusion of the service if anybody has any questions or wants to talk to me. Thank you. When I was in fourth grade, as most of you know, I grew up not in a church family. When I was in fourth grade, I was going to the bus after school, and some guy came up and handed me a little green book, I thought, cool. And I remember looking through it. It was a Gideon, and it was a Bible. 
And it was interesting. You know, I've often said, what was the, the crack in the door that kept it from slamming all the way closed? So that when I heard Jesus, I met, there was room for me to make that acceptance. Does that make sense? The door wasn't co closed tight. And I, and I point to a lot of different things through my life. And I, I remember that Bible because uh, after Debbie and I were married, and my mom said, well, now you're married. You have your own house. Please get your, your stuff out of my house. Any parents ever say that to your children? Okay. And so I remember going in and you know, finding that dinosaur I made in third grade out of clay that I thought was a work of art and ought to be at the Smithsonian. I tossed it. You know what I'm talking about? You know? And I found that, that little green Bible. And for years, that little green Bible was in my, my uh, hunting stuff. I kept it in my bag, and I would read it when I was hunting. One day the boat turned over, and I hope a fish was saved by that Bible. But I kept, I have another one just like it, except it's red, and it's now in there, okay? So I just, wanted, I just felt like telling that story. As we enter into a time when we prepare the kingdom feast, I would like to ask Dave and Caleb and Nick to come up. And while they're coming up, I would like to uh, open up our time to, as, we, as we continue in the service. What prayers from the congregation can we include as we go forward? Joy's concerns. My mom had her second uh, radiation, chemo. I, don't, I can't tell the difference. You know, but uh, she had her second treatment, and she says, well, I still got my hair, and I'm in a good mood. And I was thinking, well, she should have gotten that 40 years ago. But no, nah, I'm kidding. But uh, so she's doing really well. So thank you for those that hold my mother in prayer. Others? Yes. Okay. Dave Cole and Pat Staten. Staten. Okay. Let us keep them in prayer for medical concerns. Others? Yes. Wow, and this is Marge? Marge and, Bill Walter. Marge and Bill Walter. Let us keep them in prayer as well. Others? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Well, get spiritually good. Meet this Thursday. You have a meeting on Thursday. And try to go to the independence. And you might be moving to independence. Well, we pray if that's what happens, that is a joyous move. And if you don't, well, that's okay, because we'd miss you if you go. Others? Let us, let us prepare to meet here at the kingdom table, shall we? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through, the, through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, 
And he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, then one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, Lord. Amen. Because we, though we are many, because we are one body, we will be served from one loaf. You do not need to be a member of this congregation or even of this denomination to be welcome here at the Kingdom Feast. You just need to love God and seek to live in harmony with all humanity. And there is a place for you with your feet beneath the table. Come as you are rem- as you as you are called. Remember the journey as your steps bring you forth. Stay to pray if you wish. Let us make more room for Jesus in our lives this day. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here. Oh, Lord, to set our feet beneath your table, Lord, to experience anew your love and your grace, your acceptance, Lord, to experience anew that you have provided us with your very own righteousness, a free gift to us. Jesus, we just want to see your face clearly so that we can be more like you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen. Uh, now let us rise and sing our closing hymn, number 419. It has truly been a wonderful morning of worship, amen? amen? I am so glad that I got to spend it with all y'all. It has been fantastic. Let us pray. Lord, let this be a morning. Let this be a morning we, where we have had a new and significant experience with you, Lord. Let us see your face just clearer. Just clearer enough, Lord. Let our hearts yearn to be vessels of your spirit so that others will experience you loving them through us and say there is something truly, truly special about Jesus Christ. Oh, and we wish to know him more. Lord, this is our prayer. We love you. Amen.